on the San Francisco waterfront, it was one of the most terrifying mornings in history. An old pier at the famed Fisherman's Wharf goes up in flames, and the Liberty ship Jeremiah O'Brien was right there, tied alongside it. We've got heavy fire on the back of the pier. The USS Jeremiah is in danger. No chance of moving the ship away from the flames. You could see the orange glow and the roar of the fire. Two unaccounted people and the Jeremiah O'Brien. Crew members scramble for their lives. He yelled, fire, fire, everybody up. The guys uh, got the gangway down. There's a fireman there and he says, come on, hurry up, hurry up. We got to get out of here. As the flames raged and the fireboat St. Francis rushes into action, the crew on board captures the iconic image of an old warship, a veteran of D-Day back in battle again. Everyone feared the worst. By morning, the pier was in shambles, but the O'Brien had come through. Like her duty in Normandy, she once again beat the odds. But in the years since, it's been nonstop work repairing the fire damage and all the other damage that comes with salt water and old age. Oh, yeah. Built to last just five years, she's almost 80 now. So a special team of iron workers came in to work up high on the ship. Video camera going on. <laughs> They're an animated bunch, replacing all the cables and lines singed by the flames. Not only the wire, but also the rope, you know, what we call line. How heavy is that pack? Light, light when you're a monster, when you're a monster of a man. <laughs> a molly i'm splicing this cable back we're going to put it in the thimble ironically much of the damage was caused just by fighting the fire they're blowing their water at the burning building and the wind goes this way so everything was just covered in salt water for days the saint francis poured four million gallons of salt water on the pier and the o'brien saving the ship but now rust is popping up everywhere we've seen an acceleration in the corrosion especially in areas where we had just painted. Shipkeeper Phil O'Mara and others are building new blocks out of wood. Phil uses a tiny steam engine to pull the lines through. Some of these guys helped build the nearby Salesforce Tower. Now they're saving a veteran of D-Day. While the ship was sidelined for fire repairs and closed to the public by COVID, another repair project began, and this one was a doozy. Chief Engineer John Eaton knew this had to get done. Replace all the old two-inch boiler tubes. Water is pumped through these tubes over burners that turn it to steam, and that powers everything on the ship. Two of the top experts in steam engine work were flown in. And I grew up around steam trains since I was like six years old. Boiler makers Stephen Butler and Luke Johnson have worked on all sorts of steam engines, mostly ancient trains, like old number 29 on the V&T line in Virginia City, Nevada. This was something new. We're trying to figure it out from old reference manuals on how they did something or looking at broken parts trying to figure out what they did and how to redo it. Ready to rock. With torches and hammers, they squeezed into the belly of the boiler, cutting out the old two-inch boiler tubes. Cut the tubes out of the boiler. Now we're getting all the tube ends out of the headers. Sparks flew into the engine room, a waterfall of flame. Wow. And chunks of the old tubes came flying out like projectiles. Let's replay that. You can see the corrosion, the section cut by the torch, and this flare at the end of the tube, that holds it in place. But the real challenge was getting the new boiler tubes down here. A series of ladders and a mass of obstacles were in the way. So the O'Brien team choreographed a dramatic dance to get these from the dock to the boilers. For the first time in years, the deck crew opened up the top of one of the giant cargo holes. These hatch boards come out from the top, and then these metal bars that go across are called strongbacks, and they come out. So this whole section here can be wide open for cargo. During the war, these would have been packed with tons of gear. A crane mounted on a barge moved the hundreds of new boiler tubes from the dock to the hold, four stories down into the belly of the ship. Then drilled a hole through a watertight wall right into the engine room passing the new tubes through the hole and stacking them up. 
When it's all finished, this place will come alive with people scrambling, the pistons flying, pumps clipping away, and the steam just hanging in the air. When you put a fire in it and pressure builds up, it comes alive. Each one has its own personality. But now the team is faced with the next hurdle, getting the tubes pushed or hammered back into place. They end up going through a series of baffles. So the tube goes in at an angle. And kept hitting the holes at an odd angle, slowing things down. They said, well, I can fix that. So the O'Brien crew turned to their resident MacGyver, Paul Dean. <laughs> well, that's what they've been calling me. <laughs> what he did was create a tapered brass fitting that went on the end of the tubes as they were inserted. To see it work, you really have to climb into the boilers. It pushes through, and the taper on the end helps guide it through the next baffle. You get it lined up, and then yell down here, and say, okay, you can pound on it to, to get it in. Okay. In the upper chamber, oh, yeah. volunteer Tom Bowers crawls into the tight quarters. Uh, it just came through the baffle, so it's on the way to you. He helps guide the tubes through the last baffle. And just like that, it works. Well, that was the last minute invention just to try and streamline things. The genius of Paul Dean strikes again. But everyone asks, what do you call this thing? Well, the bullet probably it. The bullet or rocket are the two, because it looks like shaped like a bullet or shaped like a rocket nose cone. Bullet, rocket, whatever, this is a powerful lesson. It wasn't just the admirals or generals, the planes, ships, tanks, or guns that won World War II. It was everyday Americans who just can't turn their backs on a challenge. General Dwight Eisenhower marveled at the ingenuity of the foot soldiers and sailors who could improvise on the spot. When something didn't work, they would find a way. And down here, in the belly of the O'Brien, and up on the deck, these are the men and women who helped find the way to keep her going. Through wars, pandemics, and yes, even fires. The O'Brien is ship shape again, and thousands of people will once more come visit, walk through, and sail on this legend. They will savor the experience. The whistle. The vibrations. The pumps. The pistons. And the romance of the steam below will mix with endless views topside. Finally, by late spring, the work below finished, the boilers were lit, and soon the O'Brien will come back to life. Here, they are saving history, saving this magnificent veteran of D-Day.